Paul Shiroda Karja, it's Mission Bradley Boyle. To coincide with Law Idan Ashunk in Aman, we have invited Margaret Oliphant, the community garda with Monaghan Garda Station in for an alleg of bag. Gia Ditcha, Margaret. Gia Smurra Ditcha, why not? Connors and Tatu. Anna Gamaika, why not? My who? What is your current role within the Garda? Well, as you said there, Mairead, I am the current or a community police um, Garda um, attached to Monaghan Garda Station here. Very good. And uh, your professional background, uh, you know, you, have you been in the Garda from an, uh, a young age or? Well, uh, Mairead, I, um, I joined the Garda Shihana back in 1991. And at that time, we, uh, the training was slightly different to, uh, nowadays. We did six months in the Garda College. Then we were attached to a station in Dublin for six months training. We were then back in, in Templemore in the Garda College for uh, three months. Um, I graduated then in 1992, and my first station was Clonus, County Monaghan, where I performed border duties at the time and general police work. Approximately 2009, I transferred in here to Monaghan Garda Station, where I, I had a, numerous roles where I worked with in the uh, Detective Superintendent's Office, in the traffic office doing administration, I worked in the fines office and I worked in the chief superintendent's office. And then uh, about approximately 12, 13 years ago, a position came up in community uh, policing in the station here and I applied for the position and I was successful and I've been in that role to date. Great, great, Margaret. Have you always wanted to be a Garda? I have from a very young age now and I think as far back as um, when I did my intercert at the time which has gone back numerous years i um i always had the notion that i want to be a guard nothing else you know came into my head but um when i did my leave insert back in 1983 there was no recruiting at the time so i um had to wait till 1989 where there was a huge recruitment um process at that time and i applied and was successful great what advice would you give anyone thinking of recruiting for the Gardaí today? suppose if you feel strongly enough about it and want to join, um, I would advise anybody to yeah, definitely um, you know, um, apply. But um, it's, it's not like any other job. You have to wait until a recruitment campaign comes on board. So keep checking www.publicjobs.ie where they advertise the recruiting or again on our own website at garda.ie. Very good. So over the last 12 months, your role has, as Community Garda has taken a different turn due to the pandemic. How has that been for you? It's been very, very different now. Before the pandemic now, I would be been involved in a lot of different aspects of the job, like, you know, I've been involved in community alert, attending um, residence meetings. Uh, we had teenage discos here once a month where I would work at that. But due to the pandemic, all this had to stop. So now it's, um, I suppose the difference is we're dealing with a lot of the elderly and the vulnerable in the area. And I suppose my job is really is um, collecting medications, doing their shopping, um, uh, collecting their pension, anything they want, um, we're available or I'm available to do to do that. And they also now, again, a lot of elderly people living on their own, you know, they might call you, they might just want a chat. So we will call to the window and have a chat because, again, they might not see anybody from one, one end of the week to the next. And another, we do any, you know, I, I did a lot of talks in school up until now, but now it's kind of we do Zoom, Zoom um, talks with TY. Um, especially around so, uh, safe socialising and stuff like that. And um, I suppose isolation ha what has already been, you know, there has already been a bit of isolation in rural Ireland pre the pandemic. So do you think that, um, you know, your the, the, the call that you, that the Gardaí made was, we're always on hand, we're here to help. Do you think that there was a bit of hesitation from people at the beginning, like this time last year, to take your help, you know, because there's a lot of pride and there's a lot of independence in Irish people. Do you think we're a bit hesitation, hesitant 
about taking your health. Why I ask is that I was involved in the Kerry Foods um, partnership with the GAA. And, you know, at the beginning, there was low numbers in distribution of meals. But as the weeks went on, in week four and five, the demand was unbelievable. I just thought, you know, people were a bit hesitant to take the health at the beginning, but then did. Yeah, I suppose, I think maybe a wee bit slow in the beginning, but no, we, we got a, a great response now. But I think through time, with word of mouth, you know, more people came on board. They weren't afraid to ask for the help. Yeah, that word of mouth was very important, you know, uh, you know, and then they'd ask for the help. Um, yeah, so um, I'm sure throughout your career, there's been many highs and, of course, lows. Would you like to share any with us? Well, I suppose the highs really is the satisfaction and in, in helping and meeting people. You know, if I, I find um, during the pandemic that um, especially elder people are delighted to see you call because they might, as I said earlier, they might not have seen anybody from one end of the week to the next. And if you do, you know, a weekly call, a fortnightly call, they're waiting for you. Um, so I suppose um, the highs are is satisfaction with the job, really. And um, the lows then would be... Um, I suppose another role that I have is I'm a family liaison officer, which um, I suppose deals with families um, who've gone uh, maybe through a dramatic incident in their life or have received bad news. So my role there is to help the family um, through all the matters um, that, and um, that they're dealt with either maybe through criminal trials or the coroner's court. And you take them from the very start right through the whole lot and your role is to help the family the whole way and make it easier for them and i suppose as you talk there whether it's coroner or criminal a family really needs that liaison person at that time they do because i suppose it's maybe to explain the procedure because you know they're going through a dramatic incident you know and they don't know what comes next you know what they have to do so they're always there. It doesn't matter what question they want answered. You know, I'm there to answer the question for them and help them through the process. Um, I suppose, um, what advice would you give women juggling home, work, probably homeschooling, working from home? You know, as I say, in the last 12 months, I suppose the woman's role, women's role has really changed. What advice have you got there for them? Well, it's definitely it's a hard role when you have to juggle both, you know, and especially if you have young, you know, young family. And as you said, they're homeschooling. The only bit of advice I would give is just um, make time for themselves, you know, like take up a hobby if it's even only walking, um, any form of exercise, uh, cooking, baking, um, anything at all, just to give them, as we call it, me time, you know, to take them away from the work and from the home and just, you know, give them a wee bit of an outlet, I suppose. Well, that's really sound advice, Margaret, because it's very hard to go on, you know, on an empty tank, if you know what I mean. If you're go, you know, you have to take that break for yourself in order to, to keep going on. Yes, of course. Yes. yes. Um, what gets you excited about your work? Uh, I, I suppose um, doing what I'm doing, really, you know, that I'm interacting, um, with people, meeting people and helping people because um suppose it's 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 a great satisfaction when you feel that you've you've done something to help somebody on that particular day. Yeah. You need to keep going in your profession. As you spoke there about you're the family liaison officer that deals with traumatic events, you know, that takes a very, very strong person to um take on that role. Yeah, it does. Yeah, but I suppose you have to have a good interest in, you know, in what you're doing. You have to have resilience. And I suppose the main thing is maybe the ability to listen to people because people really are looking for an ear, you know, at a very vulnerable time. So you have to give them um, your time and, and your ear to, to let them talk. Yeah. Um, Margaret, what advice would you give to your 20 year old self? Suppose follow your dream with determination um, and prefer, or prepare yourself well for whatever task presents itself. Good advice. And uh, we're coming very close to the end here. That's not a Mon that's not a Monaghan accent. On will you a gaga? Take a couple of fucka look at my right, my lad. Kim Pondas too. I'm doing an all me 
but Rokoma and all of them, um, August Nervi, Machim, Liana Deish, Hanak and Chala, Shen Meher, Weher, Maya Yahar, and Shaku Dunanal, and each, um, and Falkaras, and you done Bala Bug, um, as a, a sma, um, each gallant and on Tashera Hoste. Hohinta Margaret. Gormiga Mighty Agat on Don Tuckle Shock, Agat Shin Shock, and the Gaelic at Tashi Gahinta. No, I don't like it. No, I don't like it. Just finally, Margaret, um, you know, personally, I, you know, I, I, you've opened her uh, insight to your job there, but people may forget what we talked about here in this interview. But those people that you have went out for that chat to or brought the messages or the credit will never forget the security and the feeling that you have get, given to them. You know, uh, you know, you know, they have their wee bit of food on the table, they have their chat. So um my who who for given, you know, people the elderly people that are isolated, that bit of that 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 feeling of security or or, or safeness in this current time. So well done, Margaret. And uh, obviously well done to the entire uh Garda unit in Monaghan for the support they have been given. Um and I'm just going to ask you one more question now. The last 12 months, a lot of us have uh, faced a lot of challenges and made a lot of sacrifices. Um, what message has on Garda Shia Khanna for the people of Monaghan today? I suppose um, part of it may be, you know, I suppose we need to adhere to the government advice around the various levels. Um, and we're level five at the moment, as we know, and hopefully soon we'll get out of it. But we should, I suppose, practice good habits such as um, hand sanitizing, wearing a mask, and um, keeping our distance now. And at the moment now, there is, um, you know, we have Operation Bonnet um, going on at the moment where we have a lot of checkpoints out and about. Um, so I suppose the, with the travel restrictions at the moment, we're advising people, you know, to stay at home, except maybe to travel to work and um, for edu uh, education or other essential purposes or to take an ex exercise within five kilometers of home. Um, no visitors, um, except for essential family reasons or those in a support um, bubble. Um, essential retail, um, only allowed to open. Restaurants, cafes, and can provide takeaways for um, deliveries only, and work at home if possible. Um, that would be the main, the main um, I suppose, um, advice we would give but um people should remain um as again remain active you know for their well-being the physical point uh, from a physical point stay um, in contact with family and friends maybe through social media and again if a person does need any help for any reason they should um, contact their local guard station and um, be it for shopping prescription a chat anything it doesn't matter how big or how small that we um, are only uh, um, delighted to help anybody out there. Brilliant, Margaret, brilliant. I suppose we're coming to a close now. And on behalf of Kushta Kultar August and Gaelica and Kushta Kondi Winokan, we would like to extend Mwina Wakas to you for taking the time out of your job today to give us this allegot. So, Gormila Mila Mai August Margaret August Armorlach.